It's dark red in color, as you can see here. And it lies in the left upper part of the abdomen, between the stomach and the diaphragm, just posterior to the upper part of the stomach, which is called the fundus. It has two surfaces, diaphragmatic surface and visceral surface. The diaphragmatic surface is convex to fit the concavity of the diaphragm, while the visceral surface is directed anterior medially. Its relations anteriorly is the stomach, the left kidney, the tail of the pancreas, and the left colic flexor. Posteriorly, posteriorly it's related to the 9th, 10th, and 11th ribs, and it lies along the long axis of the 10th ribs. It is, its length is 12 centimeters, and it's about 7 centimeters in breadth. It's completely and entirely surrounded by peritoneum, which makes it a uh, peritoneized organ, except for the region of the hilum, which you can see here, where the splenic artery enters and the splenic vein leaves. Next. It is suspended in its place by three ligaments. First ligament is the spleno-renal ligament, this one over here. And second of all is gastrosplenic, this one. And the phrenical lineal or the phrenical splenic lies in this position, hidden over here. Next. The gastrosplenic ligament connects the stomach with the spleen. Second, we have the phrenical, the phrenical lineal or the phrenical splenic connects the, the diaphragm with the spleen. And also we have the spleno renal, this one over here. And you can't see the picture what's in this position. It connects the spleen with the left kidney. Also, we have another ligament that connects the spleen with the colon at the region of the left colic flexure. It's called the spleno-colic ligament. We have the spleen resting on the phrenical colic ligament and the left colic flexure. That's why, and also because the spleen doesn't descend below the costal margin, this, which makes the spleen not palpable during clinical examination unless it's enlarged, as in uh, splenomegaly. Next. Now, get, let's get back to the visceral surface. The visceral surface, as we said, is directed anterior medially, and it's triangular in shape, contained the hilum, as we said, like when the splenic artery enters and the splenic vein leaves. It has an apex, this is the apex, and a base. From the apex descends a ridge of splenic tissue, descend to the middle. This ridge is called marginal intermedia. Superior lateral to this marginal, marginal intermedia is the gastric impression. And medial to it is the renal impression. And if you're the most at the base is the colic impression. And just below the hilum, we have the pancreatic surface for the tail of the pancreas. See, we, the visceral surface also have three borders. Anterior border, which is also called the base, superior border, and inferior border. The superior border is sharp and notched, as you can see, this is two notches here, and is directed laterally. The inferior border is uh, smooth, rounded, and is directed medially. Functions of the liver, as we all may know, is function of the liver, or, sorry, the spleen, is first of all production of red blood cells in intrauterine life, but the most important function uh, it has is elaboration of lymphocyte, which gives it a major role in the immune system. It has also other functions like collecting waste materials and uh, waste products from the blood, and another important function, which, which is removal of dead or aging RBCs. Okay, we have a case uh, found in uh, some of the patients, or some of the cadavers, uh, which is accessory spleens. It's found occasionally between the layers of the gastrosplenic ligament that connects the stomach with the spleen. Here we have the red su uh, blood supply of the spleen. Blood supply comes from the splenic artery, this is the splenic artery. It comes from the celiac trunk. This is the celiac trunk. As you can see, it's, uh, oh it's tertiary, ter and it runs to the spleen 
at the superior border of the pancreas. And it divides segmentally before entering the hilum into superior, middle, and inferior polar. Also, it gives short gastric branches to the stomach and the left gastroepipolic, this is, I think, it's, this is the one, left gastroepipolic, sorry, artery, and also the dorsal pancreatic to the pancreas, this is not to the spleen, and the major or the great pancreatic artery. Now we have this uh, venous drainage. You have a splenic vein that is formed by union of a proper uh, splenic vein, which is uh, received uh, 